Imagine you wanted to do some painting with words. What would that look like? Well, this paper has an example down in the bottom right. There, there's some words and it seems to have turned that into an image. But where is the code for this? There isn't any, or is there? Well, welcome to Paint With Words SD. This is an implementation of Paint With Words with Stable Diffusion, a method from eDiffy that lets you generate images from a text labeled segmentation map. Whoa, what does all that mean? Let's have a look at some pictures here. Paint With Words implemented with Stable Diffusion. Here we can see an example of subtle control of the image generation. We've got the original Stable Diffusion there, a fantastic, highly detailed rabbit mage casting a fireball standing on a cloud, but oh dear, he's not standing on a cloud, is he? He seems to be standing on some fire. How can we fix this? Well, we can fix this with paint with words. There it is on the right-hand side. The rabbit mage is now successfully standing on a cloud. There's another example there as well with some ruins and a slightly purple road. And now the road is a bit more gray and the ruins are there. What else can you do with this? Well, you can shift the object as well. Remember that moon? Yes, you can move the moon. There it is, same seed, just the segmentation maps, positional difference. Brilliant. Okay, what else can this thing do? Well, let's scroll down first of all and have a look at this to-do list. And we'll start off with the I'll work on these after school exams are over. What? Okay, yes, that's right. There are lots of things to do. This is still quite an early implementation and it's by somebody who is doing their school exams at the moment. So if anybody can dig in and help, this would be fantastic because there's lots of things to do on this to-do list and maybe eventually we can get it in the automatic 1111 web interface. But for now, we can't use that. But there is a segment on installation and it is just one line, so it's nice and easy. There it is, just a pip install. I, of course, do things ever so slightly differently. I use Anaconda. Just download and install that from anaconda.com if you haven't got that installed and running already. I have, of course. There we go. Right, I've got my Anaconda prompt. And now all you have to do is copy and paste all the different commands. Here in this example of copy, and then I paste, and then I run the command. So just copy and paste all those commands, and you will have it installed and running. If you're not sure whether it is OK or not, I would suggest running this command first, just Python runner.py and that will generate your very first test image brilliant a eh? you're already painting with words now it will come out with a very long message to start with but that's okay you can just completely ignore that it will then generate a nice image for you over in contents and here it is we've got the aurora and this should be the output that you get as well excellent stuff quick note before you do start to run that is that you'll need to have your hugging face account sorted and your access token as well if you've already used diffusers hugging face diffusers stable diffusion before you've probably already downloaded the diffusers stable diffusion 1.4 model and you'll have it in your cache and you're ready to go if this is your very very first time then do set the hugging face token in the .env file your env file won't exist to start with. It will be called .env.example. So you can just edit that and where it says your hugging face token, just put your hugging face token in there, save it. And exactly as it says up the top, rename that file to .env and you are ready to go. And what if you want to do your own? That's fine here under the basic usage, you've got the instructions on what to do if you want to do your own. Basically, you have to prepare the segmentation map so you can open up your paint program. I'm doing file, new, and then I'll have an image that is 512 by 512. And there I can just paint on it, pick whatever colors you fancy. And as long as you put those colors into your segmentation map, then you'll be fine. As you can see, an example of the colors up there, just copy and paste those values and you are good to go. There it is. So for this example, they've got a cat, a dog, a tree, a sky, and some ground. The colors there in RGB format are tag to label. So we've got a black, anything black 
is a cat and there's a number after that as well that is the weight so that needs to go into your little program the program there don't worry is already written for you that is the runner.py runner.py looks like this by default as you can see there are lots of different examples in there and right down at the bottom where it has settings equals example setting three you can change those to one two three and four and get various different outputs that will get you sort of started on how all these different maps and numbers and prompts and things work and then you can start editing your own here I've got my own one which is that basic example but I've got two things in there I've got my settings for a face and my settings for that rather fantastic mage rabbit i've also got a number of strength functions as you can see on the page there are a number of different images showing how when the strength increases it gets more and more like your segmentation map but unfortunately the image quality also deteriorates slightly as well there is more on the weight function there, more but higher, as you can see with the segmentation map over on the left. As the weight increases, it becomes more and more like the segmentation map, but unfortunately, the image quality decreases at the same time as well. So some things to do on there, make extensive comparisons for different weight scaling functions. That's one thing to do. If you feel like making a weight scaling function then do have a play with that so i did here we are a number of weight scaling functions the one from the paper which i have changed the weight on a little bit as i found 0.4 was a bit too strong there's also another one there using standard instead i've got a test one which is quite weak one which is a bit stronger and one which is just too strong i've got two settings one for my settings face and one for my settings rabbit face and the rabbit there they are so those are the masked images which i'm going to create and here is the test run this is with the null function effectively just what stable diffusion would output without painting with words and with the weight for paper as well and with the standard weight and with a stronger weight and with a weight that is just far too strong and here they are all together at once, so you can have a quick comparison. And also the same again with the rabbit. As you can see, it's early days, but there's still a lot of fun that can be had there. And if you'd like to learn about another nerdy rodent thing, then do click on this video.